Well, as Richard uh, described uh, in terms of finding the site and also all of those good observations of a sand which is in a location which we wouldn't normally expect this sort of marine sand to be. And why we'd say perhaps marine sand is not only the size of this sort of sediment, which you can see is very fine material. This material here at the moment, of course, has got uh, added organic uh, matter from, from recent vegetation. But originally it would have been just the sort of sand as you'd find on the seashore, the same sort of size and composition, with a lot of shell material in. And the shell is mainly broken down, but you can see some of the uh, component shells are here, three species. Um, one which is the uh, patella, uh, the uh, limpet, which you find on rocky coasts, uh, like in uh, Tralespine, as we saw at the beginning here this morning. And also then the spire shells, teratella, uh, some examples of um, fully grown uh, spire shells. Some uh, are full uh, in terms of size, others uh, are perhaps just juveniles. And there's a mixture in the assemblage uh, of uh, many juveniles together with some of these uh, fully grown species. And we also then have uh, a land snail, uh, which you'd find growing, uh, or living rather, on uh, the vegetation that has developed on top of the sand. And they're more found commonly on um, dune uh, environment, in dune environments. So when the sand was deposited, uh, subsequently then it may well have been blown uh, by obviously coastal wind action and developed into this landscape here, perhaps of, of, of a proto sand dune. And these shells probably come from that type of, of action. These other two, just two examples of um, the marine shells we can find, um, are found right the way through the sedimentary sequence. And the thickness of the sands, again, it's, it's really quite dramatic. It's up to two meters thick across this whole site area. And it progressively thins in the direction towards uh, Tralespine Bay, where we started. It's thicker on the other side of the hill behind us to, to the west uh, and towards the area of Loch Ein. So the site that we're looking at is um, behind a headland uh, that uh, runs in towards Loch Hine to the west and here to Tralespine and Tregumna Bay where we started. So the sands are thicker on the Loch Hine side and thin in this direction. And the thickness of the sands is at up to two meters uh, and at their thinnest perhaps uh, are just a few centimeters as they disappear off out in, into the bay. Within the sands as Richard described we also have these large boulders so there's a big size difference, which again is quite characteristic of tsunami deposits, uh, a break in particle size between this fine sand to big boulders and also some of the smaller cobble material too. The sands uh, support these large boulders and the boulders were probably rafted by the surge of water associated with the tsunami, uh, hence they were essentially floating like aircraft wings allow an aircraft to fly, uh, supporting the aircraft in the air. Here, the boulders supported in the water column as it moved through this, this valley. As the wave disappeared, then all of these sediments were deposited, and we still have evidence which we found uh, from surveying the site with a device called ground penetrating radar that allowed us to see both the depth of the sand and also whether there were any distinctive layers within it. And we find that the sand does have uh, a weak layering, which again is indicative of it being deposited um, naturally, as it were, as opposed to being brought in by people and people developing the sands at the site. So there are lots of characteristics that we find here, many more than I have time to describe, that says this is a natural deposit laid down by water, and the water came from the marine environment, and the shells are just one example of that, uh, together with the size of the boulders, because what could move boulders of two meters or more in size, but a very large surge of water. And so the story goes on. All of the sort of characteristics of the site, we think, are indicative of a tsunami, a tsunami event. As we can see from uh, the bay, uh, surges and storms do impact the bay in the present day. But storm, storm action doesn't really get into this sort of site, into this location. 
And here we're at just, I should say, around about six meters above mean sea level. But these sands um, can be found to heights of over 18 meters above us in the uh, surrounding tops of the hills. Uh, so 18 meters is certainly way beyond the point where storms come into the, the coastal bay. So the storm action is a possibility to have laid the, sign, the sands down, but it's much more likely that given the height of them and the area of the sands that this has come from a different event entirely. And the only one we can really see um, works in coastal situations would be a tsunami event.